Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video. We're going to have a look at the weather for next week, 10 days, or today's video, uh, which will take us to around the 19th of March. We'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles running to around a couple of weeks. How long CFSB to at the end of the year? next four weeks takes us into the early part of April. We're a definite signs of high pressure coming along for the second half of March. Definite size now of the pattern change and I'll talk you through all the data in a moment. But if you're fed up with the uh, ongoing rain that we've been having for months and months and months, it looks like we could be seeing quite a significant change in the pattern now uh, for the second half of March. So uh, I'll show you all the data. Uh, right now, so we're going to begin with the central England temperature for uh, for March so far. So uh, this updated from Hadley uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, provisional for the up to the 8th of March, so um, the first week of the month, essentially. Uh, we're standing at 5.4, an anomaly of half a degree above average. So it's a little bit above average, but certainly... Uh, a big sort of downward uh, drop to average compared to uh, both January and February, which were running around two and a half degrees uh, above average. So the, the warmth has drained away as we've gone into March, and we are now much, much closer to uh, long-term averages. These are the 500 mil of our high zombie flow charts from the Penn State University for the next week to 10 days. We've got the ECM WF on the top and the GFS, which we will have a look in a moment, is on the bottom. So 500 millibars is an area in the atmosphere. High pressure and low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream. Red extrapolates to high pressure blue to low pressure. You can see that with the uh, ECM, we've got this area of above average heights building both to the north and to the east of the country and reaching into the UK. There's a trough of below average heights down over space. Still lots of low pressure within the northern latitudes. The polar vortex is not going to go anytime soon. But what's happening is that just through the um, change in seasons, really moving further on into spring, that polar vortex is beginning to lose its intensity somewhat. Uh, and it's starting to allow the jet stream to drift northwards. Uh, and that's now it's reached to start to build across uh, western parts of Europe. So the change, I think, is basically uh, down to just um, the change in seasons and the fact that uh, we're beginning to lose that very intense temperature contrast between uh, the polar region and, and the uh, central Atlantic around the Azores. We're beginning to lose that temperature difference, which drives uh, zonality, and that begins to allow higher pressure start to get an ascendancy. Uh, but GFS is very similar, still lots of low pressure up to the north, a little bit weaker with the high pressure, a little bit weaker with the ridge, but we've got the above average heights from the Atlantic, they are sort of extending into Western Europe. I think the GFS is just a little bit slower in getting us there, but they are both trending in the same direction, they are both trending towards uh, increasingly high pressure signals through the second half of, uh, through the second half of March. These are GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks in uh, uh, in London with old wet central today. The red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average. Going to be very mild tomorrow. You could see temperatures in the south pushing up to around 16 or 17 degrees. And we see that reflected by the upper air temperatures too. Uh, then as we go through towards the second half of the week, though, temperatures will get colder. Uh, and they're just hovering quite close to the long-term average. Really. There is quite a lot of scatter in there, so we've got these uh, cooler ensemble members down here. We've got some warmer ensemble members up there. So uh, quite a bit of scatter as we move into the extended range into the second half of, uh, of March with the upper air temperatures. It tells us that although high pressure is probably going to get more of an ascendancy, it's not guaranteed to be especially mild. In fact, it could even be quite cold under that area of high pressure but the main difference is in precipitation so we have plenty of rainfall spikes coming up to the middle of the month that's the 15th of march just there but then quite clearly there is now a very evident drying trend as we go beyond the middle part of month into the second half of march yes we see a very clear and distinct drying trend appearing not totally dry one or two of those ensemble members still have a few precipitation spikes but Quite a significant change from the first part of the graph there to the second part of the graph just there. Quite a significant change to drier conditions. 
Temperature anomalies from the 9th to the 17th of March are very close to average, a little bit below average for northern areas, perhaps a little bit above the southern areas. It encompasses tomorrow's very mild temperatures. These may trend a little bit uh, colder than average, actually, later on in the week. Precipitation anomalies from the 9th to the 17th of March, close to or a bit above average. So the next week is still going to be quite unsettled, up to, uh, like, the early part of next week, there will still be quite a bit of rain to come. So this is how the GFS is looking for uh, Thursday. It's GFS 6 o'clock, run low pressure, still in the ascendancy, bringing in quite a uh, strong and pretty chilly west northwest wind, wintry showers likely up in the north. Goes a bit dry for Friday, but then the next low pressure is rattling in over the weekend. So, yes, there'll be further rain to come uh, during the weekend. Um, there will be outbreaks of rain. As that low pushes away towards Norway in a week's time, Monday the 16th of March, the wind turns into the north, brings cold air down from the north, possibly some snow showers in northern east areas. But this is the start of a change towards higher pressure. So then the ridge um, seizes its chance, it seizes its break in the low pressures, starts to build in across the UK. So by Tuesday the 17th of March, we are then under an area of high pressure ridging in from the Azores into northern parts of Europe. It will be quite cold in about high pressure, certainly cold enough for overnight frost, um, by day, probably not too bad in the strengthening March sunshine, but certainly a bit chilly and about high. But the high increasingly starts to dominate the weather then. So as we get towards day 10, uh, Thursday the 19th of March, we are now under a large area of high pressure, 1,040 millibars. The wind is coming in from the east, probably still going to be quite a chilly wind, but um, i say in the March sunshine won't feel too bad. Of course, the unknown with this is whether we get stuck under anticyclonic gloom, but the further on you go into spring, the less of a problem anticyclonic gloom tends to become as the sun is getting strong enough, or should be starting to get strong enough, um, to burn off any low cloud. Uh, although eastern areas can sort of um, find themselves under uh, sort of grey skies with easterly wind uh, well on into the spring. But anyway, we're under high pressure, so we've broken out of the unsettled weather. It's mainly dry. Temperatures variable, probably quite cold at night, but not too bad by day. And then that high pressure sticks around. Look at this. It sticks around into the extended range, too. It's trying to get itself northward. So it's a cold, northerly plunge on the eastern side of Europe. So winter will really bite across those eastern parts of Europe, maybe more so than it's done at any point through actual meteorological winter. For us, we're on the mild side of the ridge, though. So I think that's a pretty decent spell of spring light weather, really, as we go up to the very end of a GFS run, which today gets us to Wednesday 25th of March we're under the ridge of high pressure it'll be mainly dry if that's right and um, temperatures probably very pleasant as well cold across eastern parts of Europe with snow and biting northerly winds GM looks like that so again quite uh, showery and unsettled on Thursday and into the weekend just stays unsettled low pressure keeps powering in from off the Atlantic early next week that's when we try to build up some higher pressure, a little bit slower in doing it with the GM, but uh, eventually you can see that by day 10, which is Thursday the 19th of March, again, increasing signals of that high pressure uh, becoming more dominant close to the UK. So the GM takes a bit longer to get us towards high pressure, but by day 10, the ridge is starting to take over as the jet stream is getting pushed northwards. The ECM looks like that, so again, quite unsettled as we go through to Thursday, Friday, into the weekend. Low pressure continues to dominate the weather. Early next week, that low pressure begins to pu uh, push into the North Sea. A ridge starts to build out to the northwest. And here we go. We see that the high pressure in seizes its opportunity, starts to build across uh, much of northern and western Europe. So as we get towards day 10, that's how we're looking under an area of high pressure, which is something that we haven't been under very often over the past few months. Although we did have a bit of an anticyclonic in interlude during January, but generally we have had a very, very unsettled few months of it. The centre of the ridge is quite a long way from us, 1,040 millibars uh, across sort of Eastern Europe, but the ridge is sort of extending across the whole of Northern Europe. It looks quite a bizarre 
chart and because the centre of the ridge is quite a long way from us actually would take all that much to start to allow the low pressure back in again so that'll be something to watch out for but I think the position of that high pressure so far away from us at day 10 is probably a bit of an outlier I expect that would be closer towards uh, sort of uh, Scandinavia and Denmark and Germany that sort of area uh, by the time we get through to day 10 all the evidence is pointing towards high pressure now taking over into the second half of uh, March and breaking us out of this very unsettled weather that we've been in for months and months and months. These are the uh, options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, uh, which gets us to the uh, 19th of March. We have 15, um, from the Icelandic Met Office as well, by the way, we have 15 members of the uh, ECM ensembles. Uh, still a bit unsettled, actually. Low pressure out to the northwest. High pressure is building to our south. So for more southern areas, it's drying out, but probably still, particularly for northern areas, a little bit on the unsettled side with that option. 13 have the low pressure further away from us and the ridge is stronger to our south and east that's uh that's sort of uh, settling us down especially southern eastern areas nine including the ecm operational run that's run we've just been looking at of course has us under an area of high pressure sitting over and to the east of the country that could be a very settled option of course seven down here with high pressure more or less over the top of the country five a little bit unsettled still with low pressure out to the northwest and then two just here have proper northern blocking and low pressure to the south they'd be quite cold with winds in from the east gradually it looks as though high pressure is taking over as we move into the second half of march with a lot of those options whoops let's go to uh there <laughs> so these are how things looking in two weeks time these are the options that we've got for two weeks time which gets us to the 24th of march 22 members of the ecm ensembles then have us under high pressure mainly dry obviously with uh those 18 though including the ecm control run have us unsettled very much so uh, at this point. So deep low pressure out to the west. That is a bit worrying. There's 18 doing that. Um, so uh, just adds a bit of a, a bit of a sort of um, uh, a spanner in the works, I suppose. That uh, there is still a possibility that things could stay unsettled into the second half of March. It's a significant minority that 18, and then 11 have us with a Scandinavian high uh, just to our northeast bringing in the winds from like an east or south east direction. They could be quite quiet, would depend on the exact origins of the air. If the origins of the air is sort of south of east, then it would be pleasantly spring-like. If the origins of the air is north of east, then it could be quite cold. Um, again, if we put the 22 that we've got just here with the 11 that we've got just there, the ECM ensembles are trending towards high pressure. But these 18 just here, we need to keep that, those in mind that any ridge might be short-lived. And um, it could be that uh, the Atlantic will have another go at us into the second half of March. Let's uh, hope that's not the case. Miss Alba CFSB2 is looking at means of 500 mm of our heights break down to week periods. The first week period will take us from the 9th to the 15th of uh, March. The coming week with below average heights to our north, above average heights out to our west, southwest wind and jet stream lined up northwest to southeast. So still unsettled. In the week ahead, as we've already established. Week two, though, takes us to high pressure. This is the 16th to the 22nd of March. Ridge building both to our east and through the country and to west as well. Low pressure jet stream getting pushed northwards. That's settling us down and turning us significantly drier. Week three is the 23rd to 29th of March. Still anticyclonic signals, both to the west and also to the northeast. Low pressures out to the northwest. That should be um, mostly dry, I would have thought. And then week four, uh, which is the 30th of March to the 5th of April, has high pressure then centred over Scandinavia, potentially bringing in easterly winds. Early April at Easter is um, probably going to be reasonably mild, actually. Uh, I would have thought of, though, there would be a chill, of course, across eastern parts of the country. 
Temperature anomalies in the week out with CFSV2 from the 9th to the 15th of March. Overall close to or a little bit colder than average, particularly for northern areas. And then uh, cold and average for all areas in week two. This is the 16th to the 22nd of March. And below average temperatures widely there uh, across the UK and Ireland. Some of it, but we haven't seen very much of uh, lately. Week three temperature anomalies, which is the 23rd to 29th of March, goes uh, near normal with a temperature... And then week four, which is 30th March to 5th of April, hints at being uh, ever so slightly uh, warmer than average. So this ridge, if it does build, it's not necessarily guaranteed to bring particularly mild weather and could actually be rather a cold ridge with, particularly at night, I would have thought, risk of some quite significant frost. Precipitation, finally, so uh, week one precipitation from the 9th to 15th of March, wetter than average, going to be another unsettled week to come. Week 2 precipitation anomalies from the 16th to 22nd of March, they're near normal, so beginning to dry out then. Week 3 goes drier than average from the 23rd to 29th of March, that's a drier than average week as the high pressure dominates. But does hint it might go a little bit more unsettled for the north in week 4, this is the 30th of March to the 5th of April, going slightly above average with precipitation of uh, them. I think the evidence is growing, as I said at the start of the video, I think the evidence is growing for high pressure to become increasingly influential and involved as we move beyond the middle of March. So for the next week, de definitely going to stay unsettled. There will be more rain at times, strong winds at times as well, and probably a bit of a cold snap in around a week's time as winds swing into the north. That could be the start of high pressure taking over, though, from the west, and uh, we may go into a significantly drier phase of weather into the second half of March. It's not guaranteed to be especially warm, though, with this ridge. And uh, I would suspect March overall could finish up as quite a coolish sort of month, particularly compared to the very mild couple of months that we had in, uh, in January and February. But the main story is a high pressure taking over. The end of the deluge, hopefully, is in sight. Uh, we'll be giving you updates about this through the course of the coming week, of course. Tomorrow we'll have another week to send a video update. And we'll also have the ECM to do a 30-day look tomorrow as well. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching.